John here from All Miniatures Great and Small and today we're going to be continuing our how to play series this time it's going to be the art of the ambush yes I've had several people ask me about ambushing and wanting to go into a little bit more detail about it so that's what this video is intended to do again these videos are uh, intended for beginners so they're not for your more advanced uh, you know expert tournament players you guys probably know this already so I'm talking some very basic principles and hopefully some things to think about when you're either the person that has an ambush that's going to deploy an ambush or the person who is attacking and facing an opponent that has an ambush all right so first up let's talk a little bit about the ambush rules every mission that you might play is going to have a listing of special rules that apply to that mission and it might be things like um, reserves, delayed reserves, minefields, things like that. So ambush is one of those mission special rules that you're going to encounter. So the only way you can have an ambush or face an ambush is if it's in the mission that you are playing. Only certain missions have ambushes and typically they are in the missions that uh, you have a, a dedicated attacker and defender. So typically meeting engagements don't have an ambush whereas things like hold the line or attacking missions do now that's not a hard and fast rule because i think there are meeting engagements that do have an ambush but um, the missions can change and be edited all the time by battlefront so what you're watching now you know could always change in the future all right so with that said it's a special rule that is included in the mission all right so what it is is um Normally, ambush goes hand in hand with other special rules uh, for the defender. Normally, you will never have an attacker have an ambush. Um, and a lot of times, in a lot of those attack defend missions, the defender uh, is bringing only 60% uh, of their force to the table. There's usually a 60% on the table, 40% off the table. So in those missions, it'll often say ambush for the defender as well. And that, I believe, is just a mechanic to help balance it out. If the defender's going to be handicapped and only have 60% of their army, having part of that 60% in ambush is uh, very powerful. And it goes a way to, to balance what, what we're doing. So normally, again, you've got a defender 60% on the table. Now, out of that 60%, Normally you can pick one unit to place an ambush. What that unit is, is up to you, but it could be anything like you see here. I've got um, infantry, tanks, or tank units, M10 tank destroyers in this case, or guns. So you could pick any one of those, but you're only gonna pick one unit to place an ambush. For purposes of the game, an ambushing unit is counted as being on the table, so it does come out of those 60 points. And the other part of, of saying it's counted as being on the table means that when it's revealed, it's not like it drove to that position. It was always there, it was always hiding. This can lead to some kind of silly interactions like I just ran my tanks through this field and then I ran away and then some ambushing enemy tanks showed up in that field, which I think my guys should have seen. But in the um, interest of playability and rapid play, you know, we gotta kinda accept those things. Maybe they snuck in a turn early and parked. But whatever your head cannon is, just know that the ambushing unit counts as on the table. All right, let's talk about the rules for placing your ambush. And then we'll look at some examples. So placing an ambush, you have to be at least 16 inches away from any enemy tank, infantry, or gun teams that are within line of sight. So you gotta be 16 inches away from your enemy, unless you are concealed by terrain. And in that case, you only need to be four inches away. So I'll let that sink in. 16 inches away, unless you are concealed by terrain, then you could be four inches away. You also can only place your ambush in your deployment zone. And when you place them, just like placing them in uh, deployment, they have to be in command, so you can't string them out and have some guys out of command. Another thing to note is if you're ambushing infantry, you could include their attached transports. So for example, I could ambush the infantry like you see it here, as a bunch of infantry stands, or since this is an armored rifle platoon, I could also ambush them 
in their half tracks and uh, they would start the ambush in their tracks. So that's another thing to think about when you're considering to ambush infantry. Before we get to thoughts on where to place your ambush and how that works, let's talk a little bit about the step before that, and that's choosing what unit to put into ambush. And this is a really important uh, choice you're making, and you're making it at the beginning of the game, really before the game starts, as to what unit you're putting in ambush. Theoretically, you could win or lose based on what you put in ambush, if you put the right unit or the wrong unit. So what unit do you pick? Now, all three of these units are valid choices for ambushing. Uh, the Each of them has their own advantages and disadvantages. The infantry, we'll talk about them first. So if you're considering to place, uh, placing your infantry in ambush, normally you're looking at that unit and seeing what kind of firepower it can dish out. So an armored rifle platoon has bazookas, lots of bazookas, light machine guns, even a mortar, and some rifle teams. Really, the rifle teams are just wounds for, for the rest of the guys, if you look at it that way. Um, but what are uh, armored rifle teams good at shooting at? Well, they can be good at shooting at infantry. They can throw out a significant number of machine gun shots, particularly if they ambush uh, in their half tracks. Um, but with uh, bazookas, like a full-strength armored rifle uh, platoon has five bazookas, can also mess up uh, some tanks. So if you can ambush within four inches, you know, with terrain, well, eight inches is the maximum range for your bazooka, you're going to have to ambush really closely. Um, so in that case, you, you have to think about the board, think about what you're facing to figure out if these are going to be your best choice. Now. I'm going to say I'm starting with the armored rifles, starting with infantry teams, but they're typically not your best bang for your buck as far as ambushing units. Next up, we're going to talk about my one of my favorite ambushing units, and that is uh, tank units. In this case, the M10 Tank Destroyer Platoon. M10s in particular is very thematic to have them in ambush, um, but any tank team uh, can do well in ambush. And the reason why is because you have to ambush in the open at least 16 inches away, sometimes you're going to be able to ambush something that's still a significant distance away. If he's 16 inches away, bazookas aren't going to hit him. But the three inch gun on an M10, you know, a Sherman, a Panzer IV, or what have you, those are going to be able to reach out and touch someone. So when you uh, consider it, think, okay, well, that would be pretty good if I ambush these M10s, for example, if as long as I ambush them and don't move them, they're going to get eight shots off at whatever platoon I want to try to take out. The tank destroyer uh, platoon here, the gun teams, um, you know, every nation has anti-tank guns, and they can be pretty uh, good to ambush as well. They do have some of the same benefits as tank teams in that they can reach out uh, long range to, to hurt something. Um, but they're not mobile once you place them. So a lot of times you ambush, and that's really where they're going to, um, you know, where they're going to sit. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to ignore the infantry, we're going to ignore the guns, and we're going to talk about ambushing with vehicles because that by far is the majority of uh, units that you would ambush with. All right, so next is placing your ambush. As a defender, typically the attacker is trying to get to an objective somewhere on your side of the board. Hopefully part of that 60% that you put on the board has let you cover um, your objectives and protect them. Uh, but sometimes you have to count on that ambushing unit to be cover or protection. But ideally your other units are covering the objectives and that lets you place your uh, ambush with a little bit more um, you know, ability to just choose wherever you want it to go. So again, one of the rules is you need to do it within your deployment zone. In this case, my allied deployment zone pretty much comes right here to the field so I can deploy anywhere back. Now the Germans are pushing forward. We see a platoon of Stugs, there's some Pumas driving down the road, there's probably some infantry marching behind them. So as an American player at the start of every turn, even the first turn, I have the option to place an ambush. So I'm going to look at the, the board every turn and say, all right, well, is now the time to place an ambush? 
again, this is one of those things. Popping your ambush is uh, one of those things. Get a win or lose the game for you. It'd be a pretty decisive moment either way. Um, what makes it decisive is you got to look at, number one, if I'm ambushing, what am I going to ambush? What unit am I going to destroy or attempt to destroy? And if I succeed or fail, what's going to happen to my tanks afterwards? You know, if I'm facing a whole wall of armor and I ambush and sure destroy all my targets with an amazing amount of luck, but the rest of his army can shoot at me, then um, that's probably not the, the best ambush place. So look at what you're gunning for and then, um, you know, where your unit's going to be after you shoot. Are you going to run away? Or are you going to stay put? Uh, so think about those things when you're placing an ambush. And again, it's ambush is in the starting step. You need to do ambush before you roll for reserves, which is very big because you don't know if you're going to get in an extra platoon that turn or not. You need to commit to the ambush before you roll. Another thing to consider is having an ambush. Sometimes it's better not to ambush right away and have the threat of an ambush. Because when there's a threat of an ambush, um, the German player in this case just can't ignore it. He's going to have to hug terrain, mask his approach, uh, be very cautious, maybe consider throwing down a line of smoke um, over the obvious ambush points to, um, you know, to avoid getting blasted. So um, there is that consideration as well. There's been a few games, um, the latest Patreon for June of this year included, where I held an ambush very late into the game just because it scared my opponent. He did not want to push in face of that potential ambush until he knew where it was. Okay, so let's game this out a little bit. Um, we can talk about expected averages. Um, if I place my ambush here, and I fire at this unit of stugs that is at short range and I can see a couple of them out in the open I'm going to be hitting them on fours my M10s produce eight shots so eight shots hitting on fours four plus is a 50 percent so that means I'm going to get four hits and out of those four hits more than likely um, I'm going to penetrate all of those hits it's anti-tank 12 versus front armor 7 which is pretty scary if uh, the German player gets lucky, he might roll a six uh, for one tank, but usually we'll, we'll penetrate. There's there's a chance, though, that they'll roll a six, and, uh, you know, that could uh, mess up your, your plans. <laughs> All right, and then um, for every penetrated tank on a three plus, I would destroy that tank. So one out of three um, successful penetrations results in a bail. So you're not always going to destroy the tank. So let's see how it goes. We're going to we're going to roll some dice and see the legendary John luck with these. I've got my armored division dice. I'm hitting on fours as the American. All right. Well, we only got three hits. So we've got to apply it on the our original target and then there and there. Now, as the German player, um, if they roll any sixes, they're going to equal that anti-tank value there. So. No, no, and drop dice don't count. No. So we penetrated those three tanks. This guy survived. So I'm going to roll a firepower now. So we'll switch to this hand as an ally player. The guy at the top, three plus, next guy, and next guy. So exactly average. So bailed out, destroyed, destroyed. So let's pretty much kind of what you'd, you'd expect. So he's bailed out, and these two guys are exploded. Um, so it gives you an idea. I, I got fewer hits than I expected, but those hits did, um, you know, did what they were supposed to do. Two out of three of them resulted in destroyed tank. Now, that guy bails in, uh, I think on a three plus, so that platoon is still good, and it's deadly, and they can really hurt me. They're hitting, going to be hitting me on fives if I'm a veteran tank destroyers, but still um, that can be a, a pretty dangerous counterpunch. So it's something to consider scooting and shooting these guys someplace safe, which four inches aren't going to get these guys anywhere, but something to consider. All right, so there you go. That's just a little example, a little play example of how that might work. Right. And the other thing is popping the ambush. It might not be in an uh, ideal place, but popping the ambush and then driving your tanks 
um, closer. So, you know, for whatever reason, maybe I popped my tanks over here because there was other um, enemies nearby or whatever, and I drove to that position. Well, you're reducing your rate of fire. It's um, sometimes you have to do it. Like if I was uh, ambushing with just a, a plain old vanilla Sherman, like these tanks were here, and I was ambushing with some Shermans, maybe I don't want this Sherman um, to fire on their fronts because uh, seven versus 10 means 50% of the time these stugs are gonna bounce the shot. Uh, so instead, maybe I ambush my unit of Shermans and drive them out and around. And Americans would use stabilizers, other countries would be shooting at a reduced rate of fire, but every hit that I get is gonna be an automatic penetration. So that's another thing to consider is ambushing and then driving out to get a flank shot. If you can do that on, um, you know, when they're, they're outside of four inches of the Sherman, but I still have plenty of, of distance to drive back and, and shoot behind them. All right, so that's something to consider. Now, as a German player, you're advancing and you know you know that there's these M10s waiting in ambush somewhere over here. In fact, we'll hide them. So as an attacker, you're going to look at this board and find every piece of terrain that um, uh, could conceivably hide an attacker. And in this little area, there is a lot. You already saw the M10s could show up here. They could show up in this field. They could show up in those trees. They could show up back behind the tree line. So there's a lot of potential ambush locations. So as a, a German player, I want to minimize that. Maybe as I'm advancing through this open field, I'm gonna drop a smoke line here. Maybe as I'm coming up, I'm gonna to try to hide from fire coming this way, behind the building. Um, Maybe I want to use a throwaway unit like a Puma to lead the charge. So if I drive my Pumas ahead and they're here, really I've denied a four inch bubble around here. I could no longer ambush here because I'm not out in the open. I couldn't ambush here because I'm within four inches. I'd have to be four inches away to ambush. So I could still theoretically do that, but now those guys are getting cover because I'm firing through more than two inches of wheat field in this case. Um, in, ver in the previous versions, scouts also had the ability to, to push ambush ambushes back farther. Uh, but in this version, they lost that ability, but having scouts do something like this um, is a way to deny ambush spots to your opponent. So by use of smoke, by use of um, scouts pushing infantry up, you can deny those spots and hopefully keep your tank safe. Yes, as a German player, I'm probably gonna lose these Pumas pushing them up like this, but if an ambush pops and they take out my Pumas and not my Stugs, I'm happy. If my Pumas bait out that ambush, I am happy because I know where the ambush is and I can start to formulate a plan to deal with it. So those are some basics to consider when you are talking about and looking at an ambush um, in a game of Flames of War. Ambushes, again, are so very powerful, but you don't fall into the trap of thinking that they're all powerful, that my ambush is gonna just annihilate someone. Always expect your ambush to underperform a little bit, and that way you're not disappointed when they actually do and you're very happy when they over overachieve or even when they, they get an average result. Um, I'd be very happy if my tank destroyers just got average results all the time. So there you go guys. I hope you enjoyed this a little bit more in-depth look at the, the ambush rules for Flames of War. Team Yankee, if you're a Team Yankee player, the ambush works essentially the same exact way. Um, except you can ambush helicopters. That can be one of the units you can ambush with. 
Um, I hope this gives you a little bit more information on ambushing and how uh, to approach ambushing when you place your ambush, all the various things you want to think about. I do appreciate you guys watching. Please do consider clicking that like and subscribe button. Uh, click that bell icon to receive notification when we release new topics like this. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about ambushing. Uh, do you have any ambushing tricks, tips that you'd like to share with our audience? We always like to hear from you guys. Also, if you like our Flames of War content, please do check out our Patreon, where patrons get access to a Flames of War battle report uh, custom to them, exclusive to them, every month. So check that out. As always, thanks for watching, and keep on wargaming.